In today's Sunday solution, we're going to change the oil on our 2014 Tiffin 33AA with the Cummins ISB 6.7 motor, 340. It's time for another Sunday solution. Let's, Let's go. go. So the first thing, uh, first thing you want to do, so we're going to come back to our oil fill cap, which is right here, and we're going to take that off. That'll give it good suction when I pull the plug out on the bottom. So we'll get underneath and uh, we'll go from there. The tools you're going to need, and that's the first time I'm using these. I bought these off Amazon. I'll put a link in for them. They grip the... Uh, Supposed to grip the oil filter and make it easy. I'm gonna have a ratchet. The adapter comes with that tool. There's two different sizes. I'm gonna try the big one because it seems to reach up onto the filter a little better. So basically it goes on there like that and tightens up when you turn it. So we'll see, it's gonna be a learning experience. You need a three inch drive ratchet. I'm just gonna use my torque wrench because it's easy. I can torque the plug when I go back. And some oil. I use the Rotella T4 in my rig. Check your book for what your recommended specs are. Uh, this is all the oil that's always been in it. When we've had other services done by uh, Freightliner and Gaffney, Bay Diesel, Cummins, I don't know, those, so I'm going to keep using the same oil, and uh, let me get under there, and we'll get started. Okay, I'll show you around a little bit under here. This is the motor. That's the drain plug. These over here are the fuel filters, and the oil filter is... Up there, got a little bit of oil leaking from it too. I have to look into that. Maybe it's a little loose. And that there is the air cleaner, which we'll be doing in another video. So let me get you guys set up. We'll get to work. The other thing you're gonna need, is a 20 quart oil pan for my rig. The manual says it holds 16 quarts. I've got a spare one here just in case we are wrong. So well, let's get set up and we'll get going. I did let the motor run for a little bit, warm it up so that the oil's all nice and loose because it is a little cold here in Tennessee. I think it's going up to about 58, so she's warm. I don't think it's hot, but it's warm, so. Okay, let's try to get you guys out of the way. Hopefully that's in the right position. All right. Man, they got it tight. Uh, uh, I don't think there's a need for that to be that tight, but okay. On my gloves. I'll put a price in later in the video what everything costs us, but the prices they're charging right now to do a service on these rigs, absolutely ridiculous. So, wish me luck on the size of the oil jug. Boom. There we go. I'm going to let her drain for a little bit. And we'll go from there. 
Uh, looks like we're gonna make it, I think, on the, uh, on the container size. Now, if you have a different motor, higher horsepower motors, you have a bigger oil pan. So, like I say, check your uh, manual to see what uh, what your capacity is. And judging by what's in there, I've never used this pan. It's the first time I'm using it. Uh, it looks like it's going to be about 16 quarts or four gallons. Uh, And the price on yours may depend on if you're using synthetic oil or not. <clears throat> but I'll put all the prices in the end. What the oil and the filters cost me. It's really not a difficult job to do yourself other than you got to lay under it. And uh, the disposal of the oil. But I searched, um, by the way, I searched for these pans everywhere. You can find these, they're called flow tools. And it's a uh, less 20 quart less mess drain pan. I ended up going to AutoZone because Amazon, I bought one on Amazon and it didn't get here. So I went and bought one at AutoZone. I'll have two if I need it. But there's no seams in this. I mean, a lot of the ones you buy online, they have a seam in them and they leak. Every All the reviews I saw, this is all one piece. So it should work out good. Let's see, we're down to a drip. I think it's good enough. I'll wipe this off real quick. Then we'll get our plug back in. Just remember, you don't gotta crank these down super tight. Give it a, I think the book, I'm not sure, but I think it's like 35 pounds. But we're gonna, let me get my oil pan out the way and then we'll tighten that up. Put him over there. Let's see what we got on this thing. I'll just do it by hand, I guess. Okay, that should be good. That's good. Definitely don't want to over crank it. End up stripping your oil plug. That would be a bad thing. Let's see how tight this thing is. It's a little tight. We'll try a nifty tool. Can't really get at it on the side. Not too tight, the tool worked okay once I get the swing of it. Now, we gotta figure out a way. We get this out without wearing a bunch of oil. All right, here she goes. Don't even need a pan. I'm gonna put it in there. Actually, let me dump it out. This one. All right. What we're gonna do before we get back under there and check for that gasket is I'm gonna fill the oil filter. So you want to take a little bit of your fresh oil. How I do it? And just pour it in there. And then take some of this fresh oil and just get a light coat on that gasket. And the trick is putting it all back in there without spilling it. And as you fill this, it'll drop down as it's being absorbed into the filter. So take a little bit of that. Put that on there. 
Nice and nice. Filter is about half full right now, so they hold a lot more than you think. Uh, I'm not going to fill it completely to the top. I'm going to keep it down about a half inch. Because I want to be able to get it under there without getting crazy spilling it. I've always done this on my vehicles. You, you don't want to put that filter up there dry. Because there's going to be a little break before the engine gets oil pressure. And if you do. Well, I guess this thing holds about a quart. I'm going to take a screwdriver too under there with me in case that gas gets up there so I can just prop it off. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure when you get this started, start to thread it on, you don't cross thread it. All right, so there we go. You can see how high the water uh, oil level is there. So we're good. I'll get back in when we get all right, got this wire in here, kind of in my way. Be careful when you wipe it, try to wipe it out to the outside so if there's any dirt in there, it's not going inside. Okay, good and clean now. I'll show you what it looks like clean. I don't know these wires out of the way, but that, I don't know what it looks like clean. Water up in there. These oil filters are only supposed to be a quarter turn past hand tight. So you don't got to he-man them. In fact, you don't want to. The one thing I didn't do is I didn't date my, I read on there with a Sharpie usually, but I mark my, at the end of this video, I'll show you how to reset your maintenance intervals so that you'll know when you need another oil change. So I just, I don't know if you can see that on camera. When you get it started, just work it back and forth to make sure you don't have it cross-threaded. We're just gonna spin it on. Give it a couple torques. And then give it a little turn with my nifty difty tool. And that is that for down here. Ah, come on, baby. Okay. That should be it. And then we'll wipe it all down. And make sure she's good and clean. All right, so let's go out front. Okay. Let's check that. The lever set. Yeah, I just... Uh, watch yourself. You want that? I'm good. It's full right now, but it's going to drop after I run it.
I'm gonna give her a minute to settle down. Ah, she good. She's on the money right there. I'm gonna leave it. Leave it like that. I want to reiterate, if you're going to do something like this, check your owner's manual. Make sure you're using the correct oil, because I believe the newer Cummins motors, they want to use the T6, which is full synthetic. So I can get away with what I'm using, the T4. Is there a shell rotella 1540 T4? And that's what's always been in this rig since I've owned it. So. I'm a firm believer of not switching up if you don't need to. So that's that. We'll go inside now a little bit here and cut back in. And I'll show you how to reset the uh, odometer. All right. So that's all done. We got one thing left to do. If you turn your key on, get into your computer thing here whoops I go that way okay I got 71 559 but it says engine oil service due in zero miles that's the warning you get when you run out of mileage so what we're gonna do gonna hold that all the way over to the right for five seconds that'll bring you to this uh, this setup you go down to maintenance hold to the right again engine oil says service is overdue by a thousand miles i went over i was a bad boy and then all you do is go down to verify service done and hold it over hold it for three seconds boom service due in ten thousand miles so if you want to change that you can scroll back up to that right here and change it up or down up or down I set mine for 10,000 that's what I like to run it with so then you get out and you're done um, the air filter I'm gonna do Monday I will do a, a video on that and it's not due for another 5,000 miles but I always do it with my oil so we are gonna reset it right now and we'll get that done okay Fuel filters, they were just done not too long ago. Uh, they're showing as overdue, but we are not gonna do them this time around. Apparently when uh, they did them at Cummins, they didn't reset that, so. That's that. Generator oil, generator fuel filter, all that. Let me see where that is. It's due in 70 hours. We're gonna change that, because we're gonna do that tomorrow also uh, fuel filter we're gonna do and we're gonna reset that and let's see should be transmissional we're good so that's pretty much it so like I said in the video, I, I did find, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, I did find a oil filter gasket in the dirty oil. So maybe it fell off. I don't think it was in right because the filter was leaking. It might have been in there and like pushed off to a side or something like that. So 
You want to make sure that's in there, uh, especially, let me turn this key off, especially when uh, take it down, make sure one, sometimes they'll stick to the block and then uh, you'll end up having two filled, two gaskets up there and you don't really want that. So that's that. It's a pretty simple job. Um, it's not hard to do. I mean, it was kind of wet laying under there, but it's been rainy here in Tennessee. So kind of under the gun to get it done and uh, had that start heading out west. So wasn't a, not a real hard job other than laying under there and uh, taking your time and doing things right. So that's that. Uh, hope you enjoyed this Sunday solution. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, which will probably probably be the air filter. Probably do a short video on the air filter and uh, generator service, something like that. So there you have it.